All right, so here I'm going to do my other two examples uh, when shading Venn diagrams with three sets. And here we're going to do the complement of A or B and C. That'll be the first one we do. So let's see. Um, so A, B, and C. And I'm going to kind of do this in three steps. If we do A union B, A or B, Again, we said that's going to be everything inside of the circles A and B. And again, that's not, you know, what we're doing at the end, but we're going to kind of need this region to get the complement. Okay, so we've now shaded everything that's in A or B, but remember this apostrophe says basically shade everything outside of that. So here's A. Here's B, there's C. If we do the complement of this region, we're going to shade everything except for what's in those two circles. So we would still get part of C, but we would also get everything outside of there. Outside of A and B, I should say. So I'm not going to color it all in completely crystal clear. But again, that's the basic idea. Everything is now shaded, except we're not shading A or B. So notice A or B are, are left uh, unshaded. So there's kind of the first part. Um, there's kind of the, the set on the left here. And again, now we just have to overlap that with the set C. So A, B, and C. Well, again, if we just shade in the set C, we'll just shade in that circle. And again, in this case, since we want to do the intersection, that means we need to find the overlap of these two regions. Well, if you compare what's shaded in the left diagram with what's shaded in the right diagram, the only thing that's shaded in both diagrams is this little region, kind of the bottom part of circle C. So that would be our final answer here. Um, let's see if we can't squeeze it on here. So there's A, there's B, there's C. If we shade the complement of A or B and C, again, we're just shading the overlap of these two diagrams. Now we would just get the stuff uh, it's inside of circle C, but at the same time, we don't want to use anything inside of circle A or B. So this would be our final uh, shaded region here at the bottom. All right, um, let's do the very last example here. I'm getting a little, a little inked up. So we're going to do not A and not B and not C. So. Not A, and not B, and not C. And I think this is one maybe you should try to practice on your own. I'm going to give you the answer here, and you can check and make sure that I'm correct. But again, to me what this says is, it really says, I mean, what does it say? It says shade in things that are not in A, and not in B, and at the same time they have to be not in C. So if we were to shade that region, so maybe pause and try to, you know, maybe try to uh, come up with this region. If we do everything that's not in A and not in B and not in C, I claim it's just going to be the stuff on the very outside of our three circles. And again, if you kind of say it in English, um, you know, it's got to be not in A and not in B and not in C. And that's all I'm doing. I mean, what region would that be? It would be everything outside of the three circles. But, you know, certainly maybe try to, uh, you know, uh, shade it and do it in little bits and pieces if, if, you, don't, uh, if you don't believe my answer here. Um, do a little practice and see if you can't come up with it. So, um, and again, these same ideas work if you have four sets or five sets or six sets. But typically in, you know, most classes where you see Venn diagrams, they'll typically only make you do either two or three sets. So... Alright, um, I hope this video makes some sense and helps you out out there.